I've chosen to give up the chance of this video ever being monetized because this film is a work of art and I refuse to let my video on it be anything other than that also. So I am absolutely going to play as much of the music and show as much of the film as I damn well please. Much like Zack Snyder, I want this to be the truest expression of my feelings with all creative barriers stripped away. Although at the time of writing, I haven't decided whether Gage Storer's Drive TM will be three and a half hours long. Drive is a 2011 film directed by Nicholas Windeen Rafen, who was chosen specifically by Ryan Gosling, who plays the unnamed driver, our protagonist. In a bizarre move that actually turned out to be a stroke of genius, Gosling was approached directly by producer Mark Platt and brought on board first, and was then allowed to choose the director as well as have a say in many other areas. The rest of the cast was chosen by Rafen. As was his modus operandi, he didn't look at tapes or audition his stars. He simply met with them and decided on the spot whether they gelled. Kerry Mulligan was brought on board after one such encounter. Christina Hendricks was hired after Rafin's search for a porn star to play the part of Blanche proved fruitless. Albert Brooks took the part of Bernie Rose so as to go against type. Brian Cranston got the part of Shannon because Rafin was impressed with his stint on the still ongoing at this time, Breaking Bad. Ron Perlman agreed to the minor part of Nino after admitting he had always wanted to play a Jewish guy who wanted to be a gangster, because that's exactly who he is. And Oscar Isaac snagged the part of Standard after being allowed to mould the character to someone more three-dimensional than a disposable common criminal. Like I said before, this film is a piece of art, in the truest sense of this word that seems to have no meaning, but every meaning at the same time. So much so that the dialogue is almost secondary, with the camera telling more of the story than anything else. I fell in love with the beauty of this movie. Even in its grimiest moments, the cinematography combined with the 80s aesthetic, the music, and the artistry from every department transforms this film into poetry. Each scene becomes like its own little tableau that stands on its own. In terms of structure, we have a very common three-act frame on which we staple a pretty straightforward plot of a single hero story with a small cast of surrounding characters. It isn't groundbreaking. It isn't meant to be. It's a vehicle. Just as the driver's vehicles are his paintbrush, which is his only way to express himself and the only medium of which he knows to show who he truly is. The structure of this film is Rafen's tool with which to express himself. It takes the common ingredients of a Hollywood action movie, the seemingly personality devoid hero, the car chases, the gratuitous violence in a plot consisting of a love story and a heist, and gives each one a purpose to be there outside of what they think focus groups might like, and it adds up to much more than the sum of its parts. Talking of the driver, our protagonist with no name, reminiscent of the likes of Clint Eastwood, who is probably a great example of the kind of person the driver sees himself as. The vast majority of this film is seen through his eyes. In every story we have a protagonist, someone who the audience is supposed to connect to and ultimately become. If done correctly, a film is supposed to make us believe that we and the main character are one. This is why we empathise with them and root for them. Here we go a step further. Drive, with the exception of a few necessary scenes, tells us the entire story seen entirely from the driver's perspective. At times that means we don't even leave the car, such as in the initial chase. It also means that we get one side of the story. We make decisions and feel what we feel based on the same information as the driver, connecting us more to the story and to him. In almost every movie we get that one scene that seems to encapsulate the theme of the movie and our protagonist. And with Drive, you probably already know exactly which one I'm talking about. The elevator scene. Nothing tells us more about the driver than this one scene right here, and it's one without dialogue. When we talk about characters, especially main characters, they usually have what we call a wound. Something from their past that drives them, that haunts them to this day and affects their thinking and has made them who they are. It could be small or large, but every good protagonist has one. We never ever find out what the driver's wound is, but throughout the film we see the type of guy he is and we know he must have one, and whatever it is, it's big and painful. 
He is a stuntman, seemingly without fear. He has no family to speak of and one friend in the whole world. He shows very little emotion and is very shy and quiet, but is capable of loving deeply and will do anything it takes to protect innocence, including extreme and sudden violence. For the driver, the definition of a psychopath or even a sociopath doesn't 100% fit. I got this sweet job coming up. How about this? Shut your mouth. Or I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. But the anger, the violence, and the complete on a dime transformation from the mild mannered man to a bloodthirsty killer reminded me of something a werewolf. And after a quick bit of research, I found out that that is exactly what Gosling had intended. In a way, we were trying to make a werewolf movie somebody that was without the, without the makeup. Who can be very sweet and innocent and lovely and then turn on a dime into a very violent killer. Yeah, into a, into a werewolf. The decisions in this scene were made almost on the spot, but they combined into one of the greatest distillations of character I've seen. A man who is capable of loving so much that the entire world outside of this moment, kissing the woman he loves goodbye for the first and last time, fades into nothing, but who in the very next second flicks a switch to become a brutal killer who will commit the most extreme acts of violence without a second thought. Do you want to see something? Yeah. Okay. This leads to the symbolism of the mask which is fascinating to me. I believe that at this point he's accepted his role in this story. He's not the good guy. He's not going to have a happy ending. In the same way that criminals wear masks to distance themselves from a crime, the driver seems to feel, sadly, that nothing he does could possibly be heroic or even human anymore. So he distances himself from the actions that ultimately save the woman he loves by wearing the face of a man who symbolises what an actual hero is. The driver's journey is essentially a fight between these two sides of him. The song, A Real Hero, whose chorus repeats the lines, A real human being and a real hero, plays twice in this film, at the only points where he displays that he is capable of being both. Once when he gets a glimpse of what life with Irene and her son could be, and once when he ensures their lives will be saved. Personally, for the key message of this film, I didn't need to look further than the title. It's a story about drive, the wants and needs and desires of our characters. Every one of our main cast is driven by something. They have a goal they want to achieve. The driver wants Irene. Irene wants a stable life. Bernie wants to earn more money. Nino wants to be treated like a real gangster. Shannon wanted to form a racing team. And Standard wants to pay off his debts and own a restaurant. It's these desires that get them killed or their lives ruined either through choice or bad luck or simply because, like the scorpion, it's just in some people's nature that they can't help hurting everyone around them. So, if there's a message to be taken from Drive, it would be that simply existing and wanting and living as an individual leads to suffering. It's existentialism, which would make sense as Rafin dedicated the film to Alejandro Jodorowsky, whose films deal with exactly that. But, remember, this is art. Intent is important, but it exists for us as individuals to interpret. What we see, what we learn, and what we love about the art we behold is deeply unique. For me, this poetic story of crime, love, greed, and at times brutal and disturbing glimpses into the human psyche and ultraviolence is a thing of beauty. 
So, what do you make of it? Ooh.